Hey guys, Catch22, Bill here, and I'm gonna do a quick rundown of how I rig my Predator PDL for a day of fishing. So um, I'll show you all the modifications I've done to the boat and what I take out on the water with me. So come take a gander. That right there, guys, is my kayak, and that's pretty much how you'll see me out on the water. It's about everything I take along with me to do a day of fishing, okay? So first I'll go over some of the modifications and then uh, show you some of the gear that I bring. Just to make sure I don't gloss over anything or miss anything, we're gonna start from the bow and work our way down to the stern. Okay, first things first. I'm sure this already caught your attention. I have decals on the front of the boat of a shark's mouth and eyes, of course. First couple times I took this boat out on the water, it was commented to me by several different people that it looks like I'm riding a shark. So I went ahead and I got the decals. I was a little hesitant because uh, I know Mike Lickinelli has his boat and the buddy here in Michigan has his boat with the shark decals. So that deterred me a little bit as I don't want to follow trends, but I couldn't resist after all the comments, and it does look pretty cool, so that is that. Another decal I have on here is a Predator decal from the movie franchise. You know the movie franchise. Get him to the chopper! That was a horrible, horrible Arnold impersonation, but that's what I have for you guys. Okay, I thought that looked cool tie in with the theme of the name of the boat of course. So the Predator has these mounting plates that they place on the boat so you don't have to drill into the hull. I've put on gear tracks. These are Scotty gear tracks on all the plates. What I did is I bought one, two, three, four, 18 inch gear tracks and Two of them fit nicely. So one would fit nicely on this plate and then I cut the other one down to size to fit this plate and the plate in the back. Okay, so that's how I was able to get one, two, three, four, five, six gear tracks out of four. Up front, I have a roto grip right there, and that's for my net. I like to keep my net out and on the deck, so that way when I catch a fish, I can quickly grab the handle, net the fish, and then keep the net out of my way when I'm done. Got rid of the net so I can show you the rest a lot easier. Let's walk around the other side of the boat. Get inside this hatch. Inside this hatch, they have a suspended battery bag. It fits the typical battery that you would get for your fish finder perfectly in that bag. It has two little grommeted holes so you can run your power line in there easily. It's suspended so if you ever do get any water in here, it won't affect the battery at all. I've never had any water in here, just so you know. I've mounted a GoPro mount right here. I have installed a Hummingbird Helix 5 Chirp GSI Generation 2, yada yada yada, whatever. It's a fish finder, it's GPS, it's 5 inches, it's color, it's nice. I'm enjoying it. And I have that on a, a universal Scotty mount plugged into a Scotty gearhead right there. If I wanted to, I could take this off, move it here to this gear track closer to me, but um, I don't like them too close. I like them out of the way. And when I had it here, because I originally had it here, it would get in the way of my pedaling. So I moved it up front and uh, it's not a big deal for me to lean forward and change some settings here and there when I need. It's a good little unit. Works out well. Hummingbird's a sister company of Old Town, so it's actually set up 
to take a hummingbird fish finder well. There's a special scupper hole down here underneath all this wiring where you can mount a transducer. Again, it's made for hummingbird, but I got one of those Lorenz Hobie kits that I just uh, made work for my purposes. You can purchase a scupper kit from Old Town that's actually made for this and probably works a hell of a lot better, but it's expensive. It's actually more expensive than the Hobie, believe it or not. And uh, I'm not about expensive. There's our PDL drive. Beautiful, of course. I keep a small tackle box over here. Like so. I have carabiners, should I need. Back here, I keep another Plano box. I'm going to swap this out to something that fits. You know... Half an inch, Old Town, half an inch would have made this perfect, but, ah well. For some extra storage, I have these tackle webs right here. I actually bought these before with the intentions of putting it on my Catch 120, as it didn't have cool storage like that, so I thought I would add it. But these wouldn't fit, they were too big. I held on to them, and they fit the Predator pretty darn well, as you can see. They're just applied with uh, high strength Velcro and um, it works really well. No holes in my boat, still. Rod leash to a carabiner to my Boca grips right here. Should I neglect to bring out my net, which I do often, that's my backup for handling toothy critters. Underneath the seat, I keep another Plano box. Ouch. Of uh, plenty of goodies. So I've got this box, the two boxes on either side, and then I also have an airtight Tupperware container. Instead of buying a dry box and spending all that extra money, I get one of these guys. And it has the rubber gasket all the way around. It keeps the water out. As you can see, rubber gasket, dry. In here, I keep things like my plastics. A little uh, tip for you guys. I, I, I try to organize my plastics. I clip them together with these um, rings of different types. Stringer in here, of course. Some line. Oh! My gulp minnows. Amazingly, still intact, considering I had the lid open on these guys. Here's another tip. Transfer your gulp minnows to a container like this to keep it from leaking because the jars that it comes in will always leak. But remember to close the lid. Otherwise, it's futile. Now my finger stinks like gulp. And that just goes under my seat. So with that, I rarely take an actual milk crate out with me. Um, on certain waters that I can get, get away with taking two or three rods. I will bring the crate when I'm seriously fishing. When I want to bring more than one, more than three rods. Nice little KFGL decal. Kayak Fish the Great Lakes. It's a good group of guys. I use a Stolquist Fisherman PFD. Got snips on here, pliers on here, of course my whistle. Back here is where I'll probably stow food and drinks that I might bring out on the water. My rod holder is being used. This is my crate. If you want to check out how I have my crate, I'll link a card above so you guys can check that out, how I built it and how I have it set up. I have it bungeed in. I have this bungee to secure my poles when I'm done fishing or when I'm covering water. Let's take a look inside my crate now without all the rods in the way. Up here I have a catch-all inside. If I bring the crate I might bring another box of tackle. On a regular basis you can find drift sock, My anchor and float, 
waterproof gloves, headlamp, rag, or a, or a buff, rag, fillet knife, something to keep the bugs away. Usually I keep that in this front pouch. What else do I have in here? Scale, rusty players, and whatnot. If I lose a scupper plug, got this soft, foamy golf ball. That's what's inside the crate. I use a Zuka tube from Scotty as a camera boom. I put my camera boom in here so I have a rear vantage point. My paddle in place, the taco grip right there. This is my stakeout pole. I wanna show you something. Look at that. There's no point on my stakeout pole. And nine times out of 10, it's never an issue when I stake out. So for everyone who goes through the trouble of the JB Weld method or sharpening, whatnot, or spending a god awful amount of money on a stakeout pole, all you need is a painter's pole. Okay, I've got another rod holder up here for just when I'm landing a fish, some place to put my rod. And then I've got my anchor trolley running from stern to bow, as you can see. Again, not drilling any holes in my kayak. What I did was run some paracord right here to my pulley. Then I ran some more paracord all the way down to my ring, all the way down to the stern where I have more paracord tied off to my pulley once again back to my line. I like this. I like not having to drill holes in my kayak. I don't void the warranty. I don't have to worry about water getting in to the kayak. In the rear of the tank well, keeping with the Predator theme, Nashville Predators right there. I'm a huge hockey fan. Ultimately a Wings fan, but the Predators are pretty good in my book. They had a good year, making it all the way to the finals, finally. And it's a cool logo. Fits my theme. Also underneath, I have my kayak cart. It has a kickstand, which is very helpful when I'm loading it onto the cart. That kickstand is really helpful. I got this kickstand on Amazon. I think it's around 40 bucks. And it's served me well so far. So. All these little modifications, all these little things that I've added, I'll have links for in the description. You can go check them out. I get the majority of my stuff on Amazon. It's cost effective, and I'm a cost effective kind of guy. I think I covered it all. Hopefully I did. If I didn't, feel free to comment. Ask me some questions. I'll give you some answers. Hopefully you guys got something out of this. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Leave a thumbs up, subscribe, and all that jazz if you did. That's my rig. This is my Old Town Predator PDL. This is how I have it rigged. This is Catch-22. I'm Bill, and I'll see you out on the water. That's enough kayaks, reviews, and, and riggings. The next video will be fishing. So look for that.